In the beginning, our god created the world. A beautiful world. A world of excess and tranquility. And when our god grew lonely, he populated his world with creatures. All of which he made in his own image. Similar so none would feel disadvantaged in this world of endless grassy plains, timid rivers, and countless fruit-bearing trees. All creatures lived in relative peace and harmony, for you see, while only we, the Annalis, were blessed with the gift of sentience, all others were at least given a basic understanding of how a living creature should act and behave while under the watchful, caring gaze of a generous and kind god. There was no need for strife or fear, for no one lacked anything. Even if one could not find the strength of will to get up and pluck some fruit, one could just wait, sleep, and expect themselves to wake up healthy and refreshed. Our god in his infinite wisdom and thoughtfulness has seen fit to imbue the air we breathe with plenty of nutrients, and designed our primary star in such a way that no matter what, life would always be sustained. Of course, as you know, over time we grew bored. We began to tinker and ponder. We looked at the heavens and wondered what else was out there. We invented the wheel, scripture, computers, and so much more, until eventually we found ourselves floating above our own meagre beginnings, our crater world. After millions of years of technological advancement, we'd finally done it. We'd left our gods embrace, their beautiful green and blue ball he'd made for us. We had grown up as a species, ready to venture out and look for others who wished to ponder and explore the cosmos with us. We set out to discover faraway systems, we landed on strange yet similar worlds, no doubt made by gods who were just as amicable as our own. And just when we were starting to think we were all alone, we found them. Aliens. Creatures who were so similar and yet at the same time so very different. Over time, wherever we looked, we find more and more. All born in paradise worlds specifically tailored to their inhabitants' needs, undoubtedly made by responsible gods just like our own. As our gods had intended for us, we began to cooperate. We constructed ginormous structures, explored and learned together, and continued to grow as if we were all one big family. The Great Galactic Alliance, we called ourselves. And for a time all went well. It seemed that beyond the odd black hole or ugly gas giant, reality in and of itself was generally a warm and kind place where all sentient creatures could come together as one and enjoy life. That is, of course, until we found it. Ever since ancient times, our most esteemed philosophers, scientists and clergymen theorised about there being a world opposite to all others. One where creatures lived, who'd indulge in every possible taboo, where life cannibalised itself and would do anything to ensure its own continued existence. A world of chaos, filled with the coldest coals and the hottest hots. A world of unstable climates, shifting topologies and horrific disasters where one's entire way of life could change at the drop of a hat, where nothing was guaranteed and that which wished to survive had to continuously adapt and overcome. A world where only the strong survived and are forced to transform in accordance to the laws of this infernal place. I wouldn't even dare imagine what sorts of horrifying monsters would call such a place home. They'd undoubtedly be warped and twisted, beyond mortal comprehension. Their very existence would breed terror and madness in the minds of the particularly innocent and weak world. Most of us assumed or perhaps hoped that such a world could not possibly exist, that it was just a scary yet interesting what-if scenario. We thought there couldn't possibly be a divine creature that harboured such malice, apathy and warped sadism. We thought wrong. When the GA Gracefulness arrived at what we now call the Hela system, they imagined that they'd probably find a couple gas giants and have a world made by a good aligned but otherwise lazy god. Unfortunately for them, nothing could have been further from the truth. We're not entirely sure what they witnessed, but not even 12 hours after arriving, they'd already activated every single emergency system several times and sped out of there as quickly as their hyperdrive would allow. Upon being rescued, the crew was given a full medical checkup and psychological evaluation. Most of them were panicked at best and near catatonic at worst. Whatever was out there, it had fractured their minds and would undoubtedly pose a threat to the entire galactic community if not taken care of quickly. And thus, without further ado, an exploration fleet was tasked with investigating said strange cosmic anomaly. I think we all deep down knew what was about to be revealed to the wider galaxy. We all just sort of prayed we were wrong. About eight months later, the exploration fleet returned, and our worst fears were confirmed. There it was, floating on the screen, a blue ball of death and chaos. GA-14, 
a world of death, inhabited by horrifying monsters and twisted abominations. It looked like a malicious tumour on the canvas that is the universe. If the Alliance's bravest and brightest were to be believed, then this planet was apparently infested with every possible nightmare ever conjured up by sentient minds, anything from gigantic flesh-eating lizards to tiny microscopic viruses. Even some, this was Flora had a penchant for death and destruction. There was no denying it. We'd finally found it. The world created by the goddess of the never-ending struggle and eternal misery. While all other divine beings align themselves with good and the light, she cast off these weaknesses as she saw them and created a world of strife and destruction. Unfortunately, as we suspected, we couldn't keep things under wraps for long. When the news finally made its way to the public, most sane people were of course mortified and shocked. But as is often the case, the youths ugh, found themselves taking a less conventional stand. Many claimed to be bored with the current state of things, and intrigued by this strange world of horrors and the creatures who live upon it. A sentiment proven and reinforced by the copious amounts of fringe literature and homemade movies said heathenish curiosity spawned. For a time, we tried to pretend it didn't exist, in the hopes that it would just disappear from the public conscious. But alas, the longer we kept ignoring it, the longer its very existence kept ignoring it us. It's as if it was mocking us, taunting us into destroying it. And so eventually, we obliged. At first, we tried to simply freeze the Hell World by blotting out the sun. We assumed that a prolonged ice age, combined with lowering sea levels, would wipe out most, if not all, creatures. But somehow, life persisted. Hell, in the time it took us to return for our second attempt, this world had already been completely repopulated, with fresh new horrors which looked even more awful and terror-inducing than the first. So seeing as freezing didn't work, we tried the opposite approach. We amplified the sun's rays and began to scorch GA-14's surface. We dried out large bodies of water, and prematurely activated every volcano we could find. At first we thought we succeeded. The universe was safe at last, but upon taking a closer look, it seemed that a couple tenacious little buggers survived. No, not just survived, they thrived. It was only during our third attempt that we figured out we were making a huge mistake. You see, at this point we had enough. We could practically hear this disgusting world and its wicked goddess taunting us. It was as if we were being toyed with. And so, with very few options left, we decided to make use of certain forbidden sciences we had once sworn to never unleash upon the universe. I won't bore you with the finer details, but in short, we used technologies that should never have been wielded by mere mortals. We tampered with their atmosphere, quite literally took the breath from their lungs, poisoned every body of water we could find, and for good measure used kinetic gravity-based nukes to try and destabilise their world's core and its tectonic plates, or at least more so than was already the case. We tirelessly observed while methodically tearing this planet apart one atom at a time, and just like before, everything quickly began to perish. 65%, 85%, come on, come on, 90%, 93%, so close, just a little bit more, 94%, 95%, 96%, yes, 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 95%, no, 90%, 85%, no, this can't be, 70%, what's happening, 60%, how is this possible, 30%, Mass extinction averted. And then it dawned on us. We'd been blinded by our fears and ambitions. In our zealous desire to save the galaxy from the horrors of this world, we merely played a hand in fueling its evolution. Only now did we realise that with every doomed attempt, we'd in fact helped the surviving creatures adapt and evolve rapidly. We greatly expedited what otherwise would have taken eons. We were doomed from the start. This world's wretched goddess had lured us into her trap and played us for a fool. Hook, line and sinker. It was at this point that many began to lose hope and desert our oh-so-noble cause. Some decided to simply break rank and escape the system, while others sought refuge from the despair-inducing reality we ourselves had created by fleeing into the merciful embrace of madness. There were even a few brave fools, bless their souls, who aimed their ships at the planet, turned on their engines and with one last prayer, flung themselves at this world made of nightmares and hate, in one last act of defiance in the face of such immeasurable evil. These three plans, as well as what would eventually be dubbed the sacrifices of the foolish and foolhardy, unfolded over the span of many generations, and after many more, a brilliant scientist, my ancestor, decided that his enough was enough. Grand Vizier Atleno of the great Inalis Theocracy, with the help of the High Priest, managed to convince the High Council to attempt to destroy the world of the Dark Goddess one last time. 
It was a genius plan. No doubt can see for a sizable helping of divine inspiration. He theorized that there was only one way to truly destroy an entire world. By hitting it with another world. Of course, as we all know, using a piece of the great divine creation as a weapon is considered blasphemy of the highest order. Which is why he opted for something... similar. Something world adjacent, so to speak. And so for our last attempt at stamping out this wretched scourge, this disease upon the galaxy, our ancestors found the largest asteroid they could find, imbued with divine energy, at the domain of the Dark Goddess. And just like that, it was done. We've been victorious at last. Surely we needn't have checked whether anything had survived. That would have been preposterous. After all, instead of facts that can be proven wrong, or inventions that break, we had, and will always have something much more potent. Faith. Faith in ourselves. Faith in our gods. And faith that tells us that good will always prevail over evil. And as we held faith and observed the surface of this now death and desolate rock from the comfort of our home systems, we could finally determine once and for all that the universe had been saved at last. Or at least that's what we thought, until one of the surveillance drones that the GA gracefulness had left behind suddenly began to transmit data back to his home system. Apparently, something, or rather someone, had initiated his first contact protocol. This had to be some sort of twisted joke. This simply couldn't be true. As much as we didn't want to believe it, the truth simply couldn't be denied. About 37 hours ago, surveillance drone GAGG-14 395105 detected the presence of a rudimentary spacecraft leaving planet GA-14, thematically named after the dark goddess that supposedly molded and crafted said world. While our first attempts at wiping out these monsters have resulted in them adapting to said cataclysms. It seems that our latest failure resulted in them adapting not to our technology, but our minds instead. This accursed world had finally seen fit to birth creatures that could rival our intelligence and ingenuity with cunning and deceit. And now, they finally managed to escape their goddess's suffocating embrace. Like the disease they are, they could finally spread themselves among the stars. And soon, they would reach us. May the gods help us all.